All right, guys. Uh, welcome back again to the Hammerhead Pulse Induction DIY build. Uh, I know it's been several weeks, but I promised I'd finish up this project, and I'm here to do just that. So what we have on the screen here is we're, I'm, I'm showing you what the output of the preamp, which is in the Hammerhead build. This is test point four looks like in relation to the flyback signal and the flyback is as what is seen from test point two so that's what you're seeing channel one on top is the uh, output of the preamp test point four and the flyback signal test point two is on the bottom so here's a shot of the uh, finished board um, it's it's complete and populated I did the VCO option. I still have my probes on there from the last shot of the output of the preamp and the flyback signal. And what I'm going to do today is run through some of the test points and show you what the waveforms should look like on the oscilloscope. Okay, here's the first set of um, relevant and what I find to be interesting waveforms. So once again we see test point um, 4 which is the output of the preamp, that's channel 1 that's the, in yellow and test point 6. So that, that's our first sample right, that's our main sample and by looking at the two of them combined you can obviously ascertain what the sample delay is so without getting too close here and, and nitpicking I think that's about uh, 10 or 12 microseconds is the delay and the I think I have the sample width set for 30 microseconds but obviously that's adjustable uh, via the pots in the project and what I'm going to show you next are the two sample uh, waveforms which will be the main sample and then also the uh, secondary and so you can see what type of a, uh, a delay there is between the two of them. All right, so what we're looking at here is on channel one, that's the uh, main sample, and then channel two is the secondary sample, and by seeing them in uh, proximity to each other, this way we can tell what the distance in time is between them, so the the key to setting these two samples in relation to time is that you want to try to ensure that the secondary sample is pushed far enough out that you're not quite at your next pulse right so you you want to avoid any of the deflection that may show up when you're getting a target. So you, you want the secondary pulse to be after all the eddy currents have died away and they're not detected. Okay? So that, that's what you're looking at and that's what you should be looking for. Push that secondary pulse out as far as you can. Alright, let's move on. Alright, so, so what we're looking at here on the screen are the uh, sampling switches. This is these are IC7 and these are the first two switches they're A and B so on channel 1 I have actually is uh, test point 11 and that's IC7B and on channel 2 I've got test point 10 and that is equates to IC7A like I said these are sampling switches 
uh, this IC, particular IC, is a, a 4066, and so th these, these uh, IC7A is the main sampling switch, and ICB is the secondary sampling switch. So th that's what we're looking at here, and uh, as I'm sure you understand, these are part of the receiver front end. So let's continue moving on. All right, so we've moved on to the receiver back end portion of the circuit. Um, but just for illustrative purposes, I'm still including the output of the preamp. And that's uh, test point four once again. That's on channel one on the top of the screen. But in, in relation to that, uh, what we're going to look at is the test point five, which is IC8A. All right, and that's the integrator. And in this case, it is a TL072. And so, so what this thing is doing is it's taking the preamp and it's, it's averaging the sample signals from the preamp and so we're, we're, we're sorting out the the signal and the noise and we're we're trying to get just the signal so you can see when I, I present a target to my coil here what it looks like all right. So let's continue on with the remainder of the circuit. So what I want to look at now are some of the components of the uh, the VCO portion of the circuit, and one portion of the project that I think has caused a lot of consternation and confusion among different people are some of these. Um, jumpers right here okay and you can see there's two sets of jumpers here and where I have the uh, the, the jumpers connected that is the proper position for the VCO option okay that that's pretty important if you don't have these set up then you're not going to get VCO operation. So you need to pay particular attention to that and just go ahead and match it up with this schematic and you should be fine once you're aware of that. Another thing that you should be aware of for the VCO option, do not install Q10. Okay, Q10 is for the non-VCO option. Don't install that. Do not install R49 here and do not install R51 but do install R50 and R50 is is it in screen yes it's over right over here So now let's take a listen to what the VCO actually sounds like. Okay, I'm sure you can hear that, the, the angry bumblebee. So that, that's a result of the threshold not being set properly. You can see I have a pot in my hand. It is R31. That's your threshold. We want to back that off. Back it right down. And I'll present a target.
So that's the VCO in action. That's quick and dirty on the remainder of the hammerhead build. Um, if you have any particular questions, things you would like to see, let me know. But I think I'm pretty much done with this. I may or may not box it up. But I uh, hope you enjoyed seeing the waveforms, that they're um, informative and helpful. So on to the next project. Thanks.